What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games we'll be taking a look at a title called Smallland. This is a game where you're shrunk down miniature. This is one of those games that I think everybody was super hyped about and then grounded happened and then this one was like deep deep in development and everybody kind of like forgot about it a little bit. Like I hesitate to say stuff like that because possible I was the only person that kind of forgot about it but it was on my wish list and the developers reached out and fired off a key a couple of weeks ago with an embargo, which is why you're seeing the game today. And so we're going to check the game out. This is my first impressions of the title. We're going to play the game for about 30 or 45 minutes and see if this little survival game is for you or not. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. You can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live on any given day of the week. I tend to play the same games on Twitch that I play here, but further in depth, because I feel like sometimes the 30 minutes that I give to a game here on the channel for first impressions is not suitable or not enough to really get the idea across and figure out whether or not the game is a worthwhile purchase. So anyways, let's get moving and let's do this thing. We're going to play the game and we're going to make a new character. Let's call it Splat. We will create it. And oh, look at that. We got ourselves a character creator right here. I've got some kind of like, I've got like razored out ears and I've got kind of like, I guess those are... And tennies, I suppose. We got really, really good Wi-Fi reception, all right? Our cell phone is never lacking on that old 5G coverage. All right, so after a little bit of fiddling, it looks like I've got my character thrown together. There's not, like, an enormous amount of customization here, but there is some. You've got, like, six or seven options for every single category, which should be more than enough to make your own personal, distinct character. Let's get the game going, and we will put it on... Yeah, I don't really want to be online. I just kind of want to play by myself. There we go. I've created my own world. We're not online. Creatures will not attack you, but fight back if attacked. Ah, we'll leave it on the defaults or whatever. Let's do this thing. Intrepid vanguards, your queen is ill. Gravely ill. This is why, as your king, I am asking for your help. Venture into the overland and seek out a cure. Whatever the cost, be bold and be brave. Remain vigilant. From King Valdemar's speech to the Vanguard Corps. Am I in the Vanguard Corps right now? Did I get like a promotion? Am I like a worthwhile person in the world of underground adventuring? Okay, so here we are. Frame rates are kind of trying to play catch up right now with the loading that's going on. But let's go ahead and head on forward and kind of see what the game's got for us. It looks like we've got a number of meters in the bottom left hand corner. It looks like we've got hunger. It looks like we've got our health and it looks like we've actually got a temperature meter determining whether or not we are comfortable in the current environment that we're occupying. What's up with you, bro? I've been tasked with meeting all vanguards before they leave the burrows as I have crucial information to impart. Keep a keen eye trained for owl effigies. They're scattered throughout the area, provide useful hints and tips to help you survive. Outside, you'll find Captain Hearn. He will bring you your first days outside the burrows. All right, let's go do this thing, man. A little bit of lean to that run animation right there. Let's see. Yeah, there's a little bit of lean to it. I feel like my legs are a little bit stubby, but then again, as a short guy, like, maybe that's... Ooh, owl effigy. What's up with you? When you examine an owl effigy, it will give you pieces of advice. Okay, this information is logged in your compendium, and you can access it at any time in the inventory menu. Yeah, that's definitely an inventory right there. We got some bandages. We got a mushroom steak. We've got a wood club. Oh, yeah, definitely equip the wood club real quick. Okay, fair enough. Is that sap right there, like, harvestable? Can I do anything with it? Oh, I can. I can actually pull the sap off the side of the tree. Very nice. Okay, yeah, grab it. Throw it in the old uh, backpack right there. Who knows when we're going to end up needing it. Can I loot this sprig right here? I can. I can grab the sprout fibers. Very nice. I'm starting with my survivally gathering before we even get to the important stuff here. What's this owl want over here? Uh, it looks like it wants us to... Eh. I thought it was going to be like maybe like a little collect-a-thon, like we go out and we get all the owls and then something good happens, but it seems like they're just kind of like little tutorial prompts. I'm sure I'm bypassing and skipping something super worthwhile, but eh, you know. Graphics look pretty good so far. I like the lighting effects that they're playing around with. No, uh, no motion blur, which is always a blessing. You guys know how I feel about motion blur in the general context of video gaming. A little bit of a chuggy right there, but it's difficult to tell whether or not that's in fact due to my recording going through onto a hard drive 
or what? Ooh, an insect egg. Nobody cares that I'm just like stealing all this stuff. Like, is this no one's property? Oh, cool. We got like little soldiers and stuff around here. They're building palisades or something. What's up with you, man? Make sure to search out owl effigies for useful information. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, are those peas? I don't like peas. I think of all the vegetables, peas are more than likely one of my least favorite. Doesn't look like I can steal that mushroom either. Seems like kind of a cool underground society. I don't know, like it seems fairly in depth, like the way that this whole hallway is constructed to go down in. Coming back out of it, it feels like they've got checkpoints and this is actually like our fortress of solitude, you know, to protect ourselves with. All right, so what's going on out here? Sentinel Oliver. Captain Hearn is downhill from here. Go and talk to him. All right, I'll go talk to him real quick. We're going to talk this guy up. Oh, we've got like a little dodge roll in there too for extra soulsy goodness. And a stamina meter. Can I block or anything else like that? Like is blocking a thing? Oh, I can with E. It's like a parry button, but you can't... Well, you can hold it down. Okay. Who are you? Oh, it's her. Nice. Greetings, Vanguard, and welcome to the Overland. I'm Captain Ernest Manicabi, but most small folk will call me Hearn. What can I do for you? Uh, I was told to report to you for an assignment? Ah, uh, yes. The Elder Ludwig has requested your presence. Go see him at once. He's in the cave just down the hill. Do you have any armor? Sure, Vanguard, but bring me the necessary materials. Okay. What kind of, like, materials do you need? Oh, he can actually, like, do it from right here. So we need fibers, fibers, fibers. Uh, we need all the fiber in the world to make us regularly armored. All right, let's head on down here and see if we can find some fibrous things. I'm digging the soundtrack. The soundtrack very much has kind of like a Steven Spielberg vibe to it almost. I don't know, as like a cinema fan. I don't know. Never mind. You know what? I've embarrassed myself now. I don't know if you can pretend like watching a Spielberg movie makes you a cinema fan. Like I started down that path being like, ooh, I have recognized this niche thing that obviously no one else. Ever and then I realized like, eh, everybody's seen Spielberg movies, bro. What are you doing right now? But the soundtrack is hitting right now. Like it is... A solid soundtrack. So cruising down the hill, I think I pretty much got every little herb that was down here that's possible to harvest. It looks like if we break off to a side, maybe I could find a few more. I don't know. They're kind of hard to pick out from the rest of the environment, but I actually think that's kind of a good thing. Like video games nowadays are littered with things that are like really easy to find because they stand out or they have a glow or something else like that. But oh, there's butterflies up there. Yeah. I'm going to assume that butterflies are friendly. I don't know how butterflies treat things that are way smaller than they are. I mean, I feel like my conscience is clear because I'm super nice to bugs. Even when they're inside of my house, I, like, put them in a jar and put them outside. I don't really smush them or anything. The only bug that I'm absolutely vicious with is mosquitoes, but that's because I live in a marsh. And so, like, there's mosquitoes everywhere, and they're constantly just chewing on you. All right. Let's see what kind of armor we can get on in here. Give me some armor. So the bracers are nine. We've got those. The pants are 15. We've got those. Uh, the light singlet is 18. So we unfortunately did not get... Well, actually, are those two different sets? I think they are. So one of these looks like it's actually entirely... So I've actually crafted two different sets now. Doesn't really matter. I'm not that upset about it. But that having been said, there's two different sets there. There's one that looks like it's designed to protect you from cold weather and it looks like there's one that's designed to be more armored and more heavily clad either way the armor looks pretty cool for being made out of leaves and whatnot let's head on down the hill and let's see if we can meet up with the elder ideally i'd like to make both of those armor sets before we adjourn for the day just to take a look at the texture work and just to see how good it looks but so far the game is fairly beautiful i want to get some combat under our belt for sure is there like a secret back here is this like a secrety secret type of game? Looks like there's some resin up there. Can I push my way through grasses? Oh, I can. Okay, so grass is not necessarily impassable. You can just kind of like push your way through it. Gotcha. All right. So I think this is probably the Elder's Abode. Oh, yeah, there he is right there. He kind of looks like a moth. Vanguard, finally you're here. Elder, what are you doing in the overgrown cave? The jeweled clover key that unlocks the apothecary's chest has gone missing, and I fear it may have been stolen. We're here trying to find some other means of opening the chest. Okay, I was told you requested my presence. 
Ah, yes, there's reports from the Overland settlers in the forest. It seems as though some of the creatures in the area have become unusually agitated and aggressive. Seek out the settlers and investigate their claims. Will it have anything to do with the key? It's an interesting coincidence, but we don't really have any evidence to suggest that there's a connection. You'll find the fall or the settlers scattered throughout the forest, so I've marked their locations on the map. Be careful, Vanguard. The wilderness is full of danger. Hearn and Kalev will help you survive here in the Overland. Okay. Is there any kind of, like, food or lootables around here that I can play around with? Doesn't look like there's anything that I can really loot off the top, but we do have some more fibers, just in case we were really dedicated to the task of having a matching gear set. A walnut chest. It looks like a chest that's made out of a walnut. On the back, there are hinges, and on the front, it's strange cavity in the shape of a four-leaf clover. Examine the cavity. The bottom section moves slightly when you press it. Nothing happens. Examine the cavity? Huh. Okay. Oh, there's a big candle in here, too. I still want more fiber, though. It does look like we have a crafting menu inside of here. And it gives us access to pretty much clubs, building hammers. It looks like we're going to be doing some base building. There's a hatchet up in there for chopping down trees. We'll try to get on top of that. I assume there's going to be some loose wood laying around. But let's have a look at this map. Seems reasonably sizable. Well, I was taking a look at kind of like the options for quest tracking and whatnot. We have troubling reports right here, and it sounded like he said that he marked my map. But taking a look at my map right here, there doesn't seem to be anything jumping out at me as like settlers. Uh, so Kalev is another guy that crafts, and I'm assuming Scotty also crafts. But, you know, Splatty doesn't know, much like Scotty. And so we'll figure that out a little bit later. Hey, we found wood, at least. Hey, that unlocked a whole bunch of stuff that we can fiddle with. All right. Well, I don't know. I went ahead and I talked to the Elder one more time to see. It's, he said it again, that he marked the location of the settlers on my map. But I don't see anything on my map aside from, like, Scotty and a couple other people. So we'll just kind of, like, head around and we'll start our crafting survival adventure here. Uh, the graphics are quite stark, and the game looks very good. It doesn't have an oppressive amount of depth of field by comparison to Grounded, uh, which I felt Grounded had way, way, way too much depth of field, and I was actually really thankful that I had it on PC because I found a mod that actually got rid of the depth of field, and then from there I felt like Grounded was much easier to play. This depth of field feels a little bit more natural. It doesn't feel quite as just, like, blinding as it was in Grounded, so that's good. Let's head on down the hill, and I figure we'll go talk to Kalev, I suppose? Since he's one of the few things we have marked on the map. And we'll see what Kalev can do for us. Maybe along the way we'll get ourselves into a little bit of trouble, too. Hey, there's ladybugs over here. Are ladybugs... I mean, they're not going to be hostile, right? Unless you're like an aphid. Oh, a ladybug is not nearly as scary in this game as they are in... Oh, yeah. Ladybugs can go up walls. Huh. That was actually not a surprising retreat that the ladybug beat right there. Did I get him? Oh, no, dude. He got away. I'm trying to catch this ladybug, but this ladybug ain't making it easy. There we go. I got the lady. Oh, what's that? An ant? Oh, God. Okay. Yep. There's a carpenter ant over here. Okay. 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 Chill. Chill. One of my favorite things in the entire world, actually, is where I live, there's carpenter ants. And I don't know if you've ever seen what carpenter ants do to, like, a stick or, like, a piece of wood before. But I love those little designs they make on wood. They look so cool. Looks like the ants are down. Oh, there's more of them over there, though. What did the ladybug drop? So the ladybug dropped an insect egg and insect fat. Gotcha. Is there anything that I can do with any of these carpenter ants over here? Bug lymph. Okay. I'll probably try to grab a little bit more fiber. Oh, this guy wants the smoke now, too. I should probably be trying to parry that, but, like... Swing once, dodge out of the way. Okay, okay, okay. Combat feels reasonably active, and it feels pretty responsive to me. It seems like there's a little bit of clunk on the main attack right there, like a bit of a delay in between like when you swing and when it actually happens because he, he hauls back when he swings, but it's nothing too terrible to think about. It does feel like the club has a decent amount of impact when you smack something. Let's see what bandaging looks like. So he does do a bandaging animation, and it looks like that's going to imbue us with a little bit of regeneration. Our health meter's coming back. Very nice. 
I will continue to endeavor to gather up all these fibers before we go meet up. And while we regenerate, let's take a look at this crafting, shall we? Uh, we've got ourselves access to a wooden hatchet. We've made one. There it is. How does the wooden hatchet compare blunt damage 6 to 8, uh, edge damage 4 to 6? So this is really not to be used as a weapon. But we do have a builder's hammer as well. And so it looks like the builder's hammer is going to give us access to a number of the things that you would expect in any kind of game that's a bit like Conan Exiles or, you know, Rust or whatever else. The hammer is going to allow us to build campfires, a bed, which is probably going to be set as a spawn point. It's going to let us build walls and things of that nature. Uh, where did Scotty end up being? I'm sorry, Kalev. Kalev is the one we're looking for. It looks like we got to cross a couple of rivers if we really want to get to him. Looks like that spirals upwards. What could be up here? Let's go take a look. Let's see see if the world's got reasons to explore inside of it. This is marked with like little torches. Or, oh, there's a vault animation too. Honestly, didn't expect a vault animation to happen right there. Very nice. Here we are at the top of the rise. We have a giant statue of an owl. It has offerings in front of it. So there's some lamp. There's some blackberries. Very nice. Lots of blackberries around where I live. Small folk believe owls have magic powers and worship them as divinity. Idol statues and decorations are crafted in their honor. So basically, I just robbed bug. I just robbed little people. Jesus, basically, is what you're saying. Is that like I've kind of made myself into a bit of a villain? And well, sometimes we have to do what we have to do in order to get by. Uh, if I right click on that, will he eat it? He will indeed eat the mushroom steak. Not a whole lot of mouth movement or, like, biting on into the food or whatever else, but that's okay. Sounds like rain may well be on its way in, from what I hear. We'll see what happens. I don't know if there's going to be, like, any kind of morality system or whatever for, you know, robbing from the gods or whatever. Like, I don't know if there's going to be any punishment for that kind of behavior. We have to make a torch pretty shortly, too. Yeah, go ahead and make me a torch real quick. I don't know how much use we're going to get out of it. It's only got like a little tiny throw to it anyways. We'll hold on to it until it gets dark. Can we swim or do we die? It's kind of hard to tell. It seems like our character more or less flails quite a bit when subjected to water. I don't, I don't honestly know... It's hard to tell if that's actually swimming or if that's just, like, panicked uh, attempting to survive. I, I can't really tell. Carpenter Ant Warrior is down. Dodge away. Oh, dude, there's so many. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, when you don't have a dodge left. Okay, I see what's going on here. Let's just backpedal then. The warriors don't hit that much harder, so I think I can actually just face tank them. I don't know if this area honestly expected... Ooh, an ant's head. Nice. Uh, I can make an ant skewer on a campfire. Okay. Harvest. You need a mandibular pickaxe or better to harvest stone. Good to know. I'll keep that in mind. Let's break out a torch right here and take a look at these lighting effects. They do look pretty good. Like, what I'm getting here is that this is... It feels to me anyways... We've only been playing for about 25 minutes, but from the lighting and, and sort of the atmosphere that they're cultivating and the music, this seems to be a game that's a lot less... So, I think that Grounded was kind of going for levity, and it was kind of going... Like, there was scary stuff in Grounded, and there was intensity in Grounded, but Grounded was ultimately kind of like a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids PG-rated adventure. From the lighting and the palette that they're using for this game and the music, I think they may be pushing for something a little bit more... Uh, not, not too much, like, more adult or scary, but, like, a little bit less childlike, I guess. Uh, I'm looking for Kalev. That's all that I care about. Kalev's over Meow. All right, Kalev, let's talk, brother. What you got going on? You got some, like, magic quests for me? Like, what's happening here? What are you doing here? I'm responsible for protecting small folk miners. What's the armor you're wearing? 
and made it myself using rocks that I found in the mine. They are durable and provide great protection against the creatures you encounter in the shore. Scotty also made some remarkable armor using resources from that area. Can you make it for me too? You can indeed make it for me. Stone armor right there. Unfortunately, I lack of the stones. What happened and why is no one in the mine? A tragedy. One of the tunnels collapsed and most of the miners died. The mining operations have to be on hold for now. Can I harvest the stones? You need a pickaxe. They're expensive and we're not just handing them out, although you might be able to make one for yourself. Some of the ants, the red ones, have strong mandibles. If you can get one of those, bring it to a workbench and try to make yourself a pickaxe from it. Where are the red ants? They're in and around the entire forest, but after we shut down mining operations, they're in the lower portion of the mine as well, just north from here. Be careful, though. There might be more in there than you can handle. Okay, yeah, we can go take a look. To the north, huh? Alright, let's go check out this mine and see what it's got going on. You know what's weird about this game? Like, I'm getting almost like Gothic 3 vibes from this game. It's the oddest thing. Like, there's no reason for me to feel like this is Gothic 3 right now. But, like, that's the vibe that I'm getting. Luckily for this game, Gothic 3 is one of my most favorite games of all time. Despite popular appeal. Some people did not like Gothic 3 very much. What is that? Is that ant going to try to beef with me? I think he is. Oh, my man found a, a dawn ant. What the hell is a dawn ant? Oh my god. Okay. Alright, fair. Uh, I got an ant head. Alright, let's jump down to here. Jump over to here. I'm just trying to get over. There's so many ants over there. I would rather not get myself murdered right now. Oh, boy. Well... Murder could possibly be happening here. They seem to be quite speedy, and I don't know when they disengage. Okay, give me a minute to get some stand back. Did they fall back yet? I think they did. I think we're all... I mean, I've still got combat music playing. But I think we might have, we might have outrun them. Maybe. Maybe. So up that way, I think we're going to need a little bit better of equipment before we can go that way. Games like this tend to be pretty heavily focused. Yeah, we're not very good at swimming. That's the that's the, the guess that I'm going to throw out there. We may have to build bridges or something in order to get around effectively. Let's take a look at this building menu, shall we? So it looks like we got a simple chest. we got a campfire. It looks like we've got foundations. They take mostly wood and fibers. We've got walls over here. They seem to be pretty simple to build. So let's see how the snapping system works and how the building seems to take place. Like how the actual... I guess how the actual sausage gets made before we go any further. Because it seems like we're going to hit some gear walls in here. And so I'd like to, to be properly clad before we go out to cause any problems with the various types of ants that are living in the forest. Uh, first things first, let me go farm up some materials. And after I... Oh, the moths are out. I was going to say, what was that noise? There was like kind of like an ambient noise just in the air, and I was like, what is that? I think it's the buzz of moths. It looks like we can harvest these mushrooms right here, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. I do like the little bit of wobble they put on there. Edible mushroom. Yeah, you never know when you're going to get hungry. Doesn't hurt to keep some snackies just kind of rattling around. It looks like I need to cook them first before we get like the full amount of healing out of there. Hard and sturdy, good for protection, yet crunchy when cooked. Fair. Okay, I've got about 21 wood and I've got some fibers. So I think I'm going to need a little bit more wood though before we're going to be able to do much. So after a little bit of farming, let's say we build ourselves up a shelter here. I've got, I think, enough wood to last us a little bit. We got ants running around and things. Let's just make like a little, maybe four by four. I don't know. It's probably going to cost a lot more wood to get this done than I think it will. But the snapping feels fairly satisfying. I don't have any problems with it just yet. It seems like it accurately tracks and figures out where the thing is that you want to connect to the other thing. And there have not been any failures so far. Very nice. 
Let me go farm some more materials, because that's the last of it, and we're going to need more if we want to finish this base off. Huh. There's a key over here. And a screw. What is a screw for? A giant's artifact that can be smelted into a piece of metal or used to create useful contraptions. Very nice. So apparently they think of us as giants. I mean, what else would they think of us as? Although the stature of these characters right here does seem to be considerably large. Can I make a shield or something out of the bottle cap? Let's see here. A strange object left behind by giants can be processed into metal or used in stoneworking machinery. Oh, you're going to be able to use it as like a... I bet you it's going to be used as like an angle grinder or something like that. Mm, looks like there's some kind of stink bug or something over there. I don't know if it's a stink bug. It looks like a stink bug to me, but... Kind of hard to say. It's a lot bigger than I am, though. I don't know. The search for resources has taken me far and wide out into the middle of, like, nowhere. Like, I'm just kind of, like, running around looking for wood and fibers right now. And I keep coming across things that I think might want to hurt me very badly. It is nice to my eye, though, that the world does have some sense of danger. Nothing like running into a wolf spider so far yet. Like a wolf spider or a black widow or anything else like that. Is that a skeeter or a dragonfly over there? I think that's a dragonfly. You know, I've never been able to verify. Do dragonflies bite or do they not bite? I swear to God. I have, I have asked a, a gazillion different people and gotten a gazillion different answers as to whether or not Dragonflies bite. Like a Coke bottle? Okay. I mean, hey, we got a free bottle cap right there. We're rich in we're 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 rich in New Vegas terms. They don't seem to be hostile. Like I keep walking past them and they don't attack me. So either I just haven't gotten close enough Oh, that's one of them red ants he was talking about with the mandibles, bro. A bull ant? No, 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 no. I was just, I was just looking for wood, my dude. I didn't, I don't want the smoke or nothing. Ow! Smack this dude up. There we go. Oh, there's another one. Oh, God. Okay, this is the terrible, this is a terrible idea. We gotta go. This is the worst idea ever, and it is not going to work out for moi. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just kind of like, oh my god, okay. Nope. I got, oh my god, I gotta be dashing and daring, chat. I gotta be dashing and daring. We gotta do the Errol Flynn routine. Oof. Okay, it looks like they can't get to me. I think we're all right. I do not seem to be able to make a bandage just yet, so I'm guessing I'm gonna need a workbench or something in order to make that function properly. I got a few little fibers left. A million little fibers. Uh, we'll make one of those bad boys right there because the axe and your crafting. So, like your 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 wood chopping equipment, um, it does not it, it does not combo the same way the club does. So it seems to me that there's a definite demarcation line in between equipment that's meant to be used for fighting enemies and like technically, yeah, you can fight the enemy with a hatchet, but it doesn't have a combo animation the same way that the club does, which means it becomes difficult to get follow-up hits and whatnot. Now that we're a tad more comfy, let's see if we can make any cool interactive stuff. So a workbench, we can make one of those right now. Let's knock out a workbench real quick, and then we can get a stone cutter, uh, but we need 10 stones in order to do that. So we are gonna have to tackle, I think it's, I, I think it's unavoidable. I think we're gonna have to tackle some of those red ants. Our last sortie with them did not go well at all. I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm just saying, last last kerfuffle with them did not go great. Uh, it looks like this is indeed the location through which you can do a lot more crafting. What else do we have around? So we've got a wooden sword that gives us edged damage. We've also got a simple bow right there. We can make our first pickaxe, a ladybug travel kit. It has a special treat for taming a ladybug as well as a backpack to attach to their forewing. Oh, so for this group of people, ladybugs are a pack animal. 
That's what I just learned. If I can get some chitin. What? What do you want? What? What? What is your problem, bro? What is your issue? You wandered into the wrong neighborhood, all right? That was a revenge killing. There's a little seam. I can see it in the water right there. A little bit unfortunate, but okay. And we got another screw. Ooh, another couple screws over here. Let me get them. Let me get them screws. All right, so we need to figure out where we get chitin from. And I think that's part of the fun exploratory aspect of the game is just kind of figuring out where you source different things from. The chitin, I'm going to guess, it looks like we can get a better axe right here, but we need chitin in order to do it. I don't know exactly. It's probably the stink bugs would be my guess, but I don't know how tough the stink bugs are. There is a simple bow. We can make that. Uh, arrows. How hard are those to make? Not that bad, actually. Let's make a bow. I think that's not a bad call. And then we'll just make, like, a nice little stack of arrows right there. Yeah. Let's take a look at this uh, shooting animation, maybe. Ooh, more screws. Nice. Well, when I get around to it, I'm going to have all kinds of metal ready to go for when our smeltery begins to deltery. Uh, let's go find one of those stink bugs and see if maybe they're the ones that drop the chitin. I don't know. One thing I absolutely know is that we don't want to get into the water. I love the way if you look along the edges, you can see the lily pad disturbing the surface tension of the water. Interesting little detail. All right, let's find a stink bug and let's see if we can bring it home. How much damage does our bow actually do? 12 to 14. That's pretty good. That's like double the damage that our club does. So, I need to equip an arrow in order to use the bow. Well, there you go. Oof, the drop-off. Uh, that hit pretty... Oh, a Sawyer... A Sawyer Beetle? What does a... What does a Sawyer Beetle do? It bites me is apparently what it does. I mean, he's dead. A Beetle Heart. Hey, there's the chitin we needed, though. Okay, so we can make beetle sausage now. I want to tame a ladybug, and I want it to be my little friend that carries my stuff for me. I don't know. I would name it Brady. Brady the ladybug. I was trying to think of other names that, like, rhyme with lady, and Brady was really the only thing that came to mind. O'Grady? O'Grady the ladybug? Ah, Christ, is another one. I'm going to smack him. I'm going to smack him. Ow! Okay. Blocking does not appear to be working. I got I to gotta figure out the block timing, I think. Block timing might be a good thing to resolve. Get him for 19 damage there. Get him for 20. Oh, he left. Oh, you messed up. You messed up real bad, bug. Does he get his health back when he resets? Unfortunate. I do want to kill him. We definitely need more chitin so that we can get the better axe. Dude, they need to stop making screeching noises from the dark. I actually legitimately fear for my safety right now. Oh, he dodged it. There we go. There's another hit. Fall back. Get him for the nine. Just hit him with what I can hit him for. There we go. Drop him. Looks like you can actually kind of exploit the leashing a little bit on the mobs in order to get, like, hits off on them. That, like, I don't have the skill cap to actually defeat these bugs. There is a block animation. I just can't figure out the timing on it. Luckily, the block system does not seem to be necessary as of right now, he said hesitantly. Like, so, for example, if you ever... I hate I, I hate how much I'm invoking Grounded right now. I really like to appraise games based on their own standards, but, like, you've got things that are similar to one another. It's a natural place to go. Uh, so, you know how in Grounded, like, mastering the perfect parry system is effectively vital in order for you to play the game properly and defeat some of the bigger threats? That does not appear to be the case here. I keep expecting to get, like, absurdly punished by not using the block system. But, like, you, you take damage. I mean, it hurts when you get hit, but it's not that bad. 
I do like that they pretty frequently give you these little vistas where you can look around and see stuff going on. I'm still, like, afraid of the big ants, though. I'm still kind of like... I'm not, like, super scared, you know what I mean? Because I'm a grown man, all right? That's an ant right there. But that having been said, um, I am filled with trepidity about beefing with red ants. But I do think that getting the stone armor is a really good idea. Maybe I'll try to track down some more goodies around here. I don't know. I, I just want to get a few more of those. I don't know what a Sawyer beetle is. I don't know if we have those here in California. It looked like a stink bug to me. That's what it looked like. Our stink bugs kind of look like that. I mean, they've got like little markings on their little back shell too. But it kind of got like the same shape as like a stink bug to me anyways. I don't know. Entomology is not necessarily one of those avenues that I'm incredibly good at. But we've been playing the game for about 50 minutes right now with some edits on in there. From my view so far, what I've seen in the first hour, and keep in mind that this is 50 minutes of gameplay completely blind going in and I'm just kind of spitballing. I like the world design. I think that the color palette is very pleasant. I like the texture work and I like the use of depth of field, which is a rare thing that I never thought I would live to say because normally I'm really against depth of field. Like I, I hate it. I try to find ways to disable it in every game, but I think it's done very tastefully in this title. The world feels whimsical and yet the world feels a little bit threatening from what I've seen so far. The soundtrack is an absolute banger. I do think that the combat is a little bit clunkier than grounded. So in grounded, the combat felt tighter. The combat combat felt more visceral and it felt very much like kind of a reactivity game where you needed to learn to perfect parry and you needed to learn to block and there was kind of like a tempo almost like a rhythm like ba 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 to the fighting uh this game i think that's what reminds me of gothic about it as i brought up earlier is that the combat has like a little bit of clunk to it but by and large, I kind of like the world building that they're doing so far. The biggest bummer for me right now is just that the Elder said that he lit up where those settlers are. And Scotty is a crafter. Kalev is a crafter. Hearn is a crafter. Drustana maybe is one of the settlers, but the settlers don't seem to be lit up on my map right now. I went into the menu because I thought like, hey, maybe there's a quest area. But there doesn't seem to be any place to track these quests. And I redid this conversation and he just said scattered throughout the forest. He didn't give me any heading or anything else like that. And so while I'm not a person that needs uh, actual marks on the map, you can kind of give me directions like go to the great stone next to the wooden owl and walk northwest. Like I'm fine with old school directions. Like, uh Oh, that's probably not great. Okay. So you do drown. Your character is incapable of swimming. Uh, the good news is... Oh, no, that's bad news. Never mind. I take it back. Uh, I was going to get to this. I've already tested dying. I threw myself in the middle of a bunch of mobs and just let them kill me to see what happens when you die. You drop all your loot when you die. I'm going to run back to the water and find out if we just lost all of our gear and all of our farmable items and all of our equipment. Aha. Good. This is exactly what I wanted to check. So if you're unable to swim and you die, having your gravestone be at the bottom of the water would be tremendously disruptive and not fun. However, it looks like the game looks and finds the nearest spit of land and puts your gravestone on there. So that's good. That's just what I wanted to check. But yeah, those are my thoughts so far. I don't think we've played the game quite enough to give a very, very real feel as to whether or not this is a good or bad game. It is an early access, so keep that in mind. It's entirely possible that there's a whole bunch of things here that are not implemented yet. There may be quests that are non-functional. I don't know. I've only had like one contact with the developers and that was them sending the key on over for the game so that I could check it out and do my first impressions. But my thoughts are, I like the game world, I like the graphics, I think it all looks great. I think they've used a lot of tasteful post-processing effects in order to make the world feel suitably big and large. The lighting effects are very pleasant. Uh, it is a game where the combat is somewhat clunky from what I've seen, but the range combat does feel pretty good. Other than that, though, I think I'm going to need to play it a little bit more to get to the bottom of it. Hopefully this video was helpful in at least some regard, but, you know, it is what it is. I kind of got behind on this one. I thought the embargo was a couple days from now, and I had it mixed up with another title, and so I just kind of had to do this one off the cuff. 
Sorry if it wasn't good enough, but I did my best with the time I had. The, the video is going to go live like in a couple hours. I'm up late recording this one right now. Uh, I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today we were taking a first look at Small Land to see if it suits your fancy. A little survival game that's releasing into early access. And tomorrow we'll be taking a look at something else. Thanks for hanging out. Pretty solid chance I may end up streaming this game at some point this week. Don't know what day it'll happen, so pop into my Discord and, like, ask, uh, and I'll just let you know. I'm always in my Discord. But up until then, I'll catch y'all later. Bye, folks.